Hello and welcome to the first lesson of the course Reading and Writing the Arabic Script brought to you by www.arabic-studio.com In this lesson we're going to be going through the first chapter of the textbook by the same name, Reading and Writing the Arabic Script also um, available to download for free um, at that website So this is divided into five parts, this lesson, part one we'll be looking at the primary letters of the Arabic alphabet, 28 letters part two we'll just go back and look at similar sounding letters and make sure we know how to uh, pronounce them and understand the difference in pronunciation between similar sounding letters. Part three we'll look at, um, or part three I'll recite the whole alphabet and hopefully you can recite along from beginning to end. Part four we're going to look at supplementary letters which are letters in Arabic uh, which aren't part of the standard alphabet but they're used in Arabic anyway. And in part five we'll just have a, a few revision suggestions before next lesson. So there are 28 letters in the Arabic alphabet. I'm just going to go through um, each letter one at a time and understand how to pronounce it correctly. Now I should give you a word of warning here. Um, in order to understand uh, the way the correct way to pronounce these letters, I'm going to be using English equivalents. And sometimes there are equivalents in some dialects of English which don't exist in others. So I'll be making use of the different dialects of English and also uh, French where appropriate. Um, and as you'll see, my uh, understanding and pronunciation and impersonation of those dialects is very imperfect, but hopefully bear with me and uh, it will give you an idea of how to pronounce the letters correctly. So beginning then with the alif, this is a slightly awkward letter to begin with um, and so I'm just going to leave it out and come back to it in section four and you'll see why you see why we do that then. So really we're beginning with the letter ba. Now this is a equivalent to our English letter b, okay, as in book for example. So if we were to write uh, the word book using Arabic letters, we begin with ba, okay. Then we have da. Da. Now this is the equivalent of our English letter T, as in table, for example. Um, there's just a couple of points to note here before we move on. Uh, firstly, you will have noticed, if you're familiar with Urdu, uh, that the names of the letters are slightly different to the names of the letters in Urdu. Uh, so for example, where, whereas in Urdu we have B, in um, Arabic we have Ba, and whereas in Urdu we have De, in Arabic we have Da. da. And also, as the reason, one of the reasons for this difference um, in, in, in the names of the letters is that they actually pronounce slightly differently as well. So it's, it is something to uh, listen out for and trying to get right. So in Urdu, the the, uh, the da, for example, which is de in Urdu, is a much softer um, sound and, and slightly further from our English T. So if we take a word like um, uh, Torah, for example, or takabur, takabur, which means pride and arrogance uh, in Arabic, this word is also used in Urdu, but with a softer with a softer ta, so it becomes the te, takabur, takabur, okay? The second point to note here is that there are fewer letters um, in the Urdu alphabet uh, compared to the Arabic alphabet. So we don't have, for example, the um, in Arabic, whereas we do in Urdu, which is the, um, the English P sound. So something to bear in mind. Okay, then we have tha, tha. Now this is, in English, represented by the combination th in words like thin and thick, all right? Then we have a uh, jim, jim. Uh, this is just the equivalent of the English J, as in Jack and Jim, for example. One thing to bear in mind and to uh, try and get right is uh, that this sound isn't like the j sound, uh, which is sometimes hear, heard in English in words like vision, for example, and, and which is also heard in, in French in words like je m'appelle, or phrases like je m'appelle. Um, so it is a hard sound, j, jim, for Jack and Jim, all right? Then we have ha, ha. Now this is approximately our English H, but not quite. The way to pronounce this is uh, that it is by a constriction of the throat. So the muscles that we use for swallowing, they actually, they actually tense up, and it makes the throat um, constrict slightly, which results in the air rushing out much quicker than it ordinarily does for H. So um, what we get is a ha sound, a ha, and it's sometimes heard in some English exclamations. For example, Aha! If you were to say aha, you would sort of hear this sound. And also, uh, for example, if you were to shout hey, all right, you might uh, make this sort of an H sound. So it's not the equivalent of our English H as in hello or hi. It's a much sharper sound with the throat constricting and the air rushing out much quicker. Ha! Okay. And then we have ha. Ha. This is um, the equivalent of the ch in uh, the Scottish dialect. So. Uh, for example, where they say loch, loch, that ch sound is, is this ch. Okay, then we have dal, which is very easy, so English d, words like dad. Then dal, 
which is represented in English by a th in a com the combination th in words like this and that. Now, if you've been paying attention, hopefully, you will have noticed that we already had a th earlier on when we were discussing th, the letter th. And the reason is um, the reason that both letters are represented uh, by th is that the th combination actually produces two different sounds in English. So if you uh, listen carefully, you'll hear that there's a clear difference between the th in thin and the th in this. This we don't say this, do we? we say this? So uh, that difference in phonetics is called uh, voiced and voiceless. So the thin is voiceless, voiceless, and uh, the, the the th in this is called voiced. And we'll come back to this in the next section. Um, but that difference in Arabic translates into two separate letters. So the th of thin is th, and the th of this and that um, is idhal. Okay, then we have the ra. The ra. Now this isn't. Uh, like the English R, and that's the way this letter is used, uh, usually used in Urdu, but that's not the way it's used in Arabic. Okay, the way to th think about this letter, and the way to get it right, is to um, r roll your tongue, so you get a rrrr sound. Now what's happening when you're making that sound, is that the tongue is making a series of quick flaps against uh, the front, uh, the upper front part of the mouth, which is known as the alveolar ridge. Now if you imagine isolating a single one of those flaps, so ra. Ra, that's the ra sound, and it is used in certain English dialects. So, for example, in uh, American English, it's sometimes used as uh, w where we have the letter t. So, where in British English we would say better and use the t um, as as a standard t. In American English, you might hear better, ra. So that uh, you can hear that flap that's being made with the tongue and the alveolar ridge. That's the ra sound. And again, also in Australian English, you might hear better, better. So that's, it's the same sound, it's that flap that's being made, and that's the ra sound. Okay, then we have a few very easy letters. So we have zai, which is uh, the English z, words like zebra. We have seen, which is the English s, the equivalent is the English s, words like sun. Sheen, which is uh, the English equivalent is sh, in words like shatter, for example. And then we have a, a slightly a difficult to get right series of letters. Um, called the emphatic consonants, and they are sad, bad, ba, and va. All right, so these are known as, known as the emphatic consonants, and also sometimes uh, referred to as the velarized or the pharyngealized consonants. And um, th the way to think of them is that, with the exception of the bad, which we'll come to later, the second letter in the series, each of these is a heavier or a uh, emphatic version of one of the letters which has preceded, of another letter which has preceded it. And the way that emphasis is produced is that the front of the tongue, or the part of the tongue which is um, making some contact with the mouth, it's usually some part of the front of the tongue, is making that contact w w with some pressure. And the back of the tongue is raised, and it, it res what it results in is a heavier or a deeper sort of sound. So let's, let's just give a few examples. So if we have the first letter in the series, the sod, the sod, okay, now this is the emphatic version of scene. Okay, the emphatic version of seen. So whereas seen is quite light, is quite light. We have sod, which is heavier. And the way that heaviness is produced is that the front of the tongue is in um, contact with the same point of the mouth in both seen and sod. But for the sod, that contact is is harder. And also the back of the tongue is raised. So seen and sod, seen and sod, bod, like we said, we're going to come back to. So ta, the ta is the emphatic ta. Okay, so the same principle applies. The front of the tongue makes a contact with the, uh, the same point of the mouth in both letters, ta and ba, but in ba, that contact is much harder, and the back of the tongue is raised. So we have ta and ba. Just to give you a few examples, if you, if you go back uh, to look at sin and sad, for example, we have the verb in Arabic, sebba, sebba, which means to curse someone or to, you know, to swear at someone, which begins with sin, sebba. But then we have sobba, sobba, which begins with, with sod, as you can hear, it's a heavier sound, which means to pour water. Uh, here, with da and ba, we have, for example, takabur, which we had earlier, uh, which is uh, which means pride or arrogance. Uh, whereas with ba, we have tib, for example, which means medicine. You can hear there's a, a very different sounds. Okay, then we have uh, the dha, the dha. Now, this is the emphatic version of the dhal sound. Same principle, so the dhal, the tongue is in the same making contact with the same point of the mouth, which is in fact just 